up the rig and three of the diagonals have broken strands and need to be replaced. Oh, so. Just see how much tension's on it. And then the read down here for what it should be. What do you run at? About 15% or 20%? No, about 18 to 20. So we about should be sitting 20. at about 3100. Yeah, you should read over here 40 46. Six. You're reading 49 at the moment. Yeah. So way too high, way too much tension. And if you look up the mast, now that the back stays off, you'll see the bottom section is very straight and the top section is a little bit curved. Four, five, yeah, five. Just yeah, five. Quarter right, that should be enough. It's still pretty bloody tight. It is still a bit tight, eh? Yeah. I don't know. They may have tension these as well. They might have over tension, but I can't check it because of yeah. The, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do the other one. Is the leave, leave it now. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. How it seems loose, right? Yeah, yeah. It's fucking loose. <laughs> so that we can seal this window. It's got a minor leak in this corner, so dig out the sealant and re it. and see whether it needs replacing or whether we can just put a shim or a sheave on the inside um, to stop the bolt wiggling. The other option is potentially another bolt but that's another whole can of worms so hopefully we can just put a little sheave in there. Here we go. Have you got the wires? No. Yep. Got the wires. Okay, and now you're gonna take them over there and pass them through this gap to me. Through this gap? Yeah. Right. You got it? Yep. Okay. What is it we just did, Simon? Well, this is one piece, the whole bathroom. There's a bulkhead here and a bulkhead at the back. There's also a bulkhead, floor to ceiling bulkheads here as well. So there's one gap in between this wall and the stringers about this wide. And we had to drop the magnet down and pull it down in front through a hole about that big over the stringer in front of the bulkhead and then back through the uh, uh, center line bulkhead. The problem is there's nowhere to get under there, there's a hole about that big. So we shoved a magnetic wand up there and had a magnet on a piece of string and did some fishing for about 15 minutes until we caught the big kahuna and managed to get a mouse line through and from there it's been pretty quick. So this has been a bit more of a mission than we thought. When you're here, can you hold up the light please? Cool. Slow, pull on black, pull on red. Yep. Good. Yeah, just want to make sure that we've got enough through here. That this can be whatever height we want. Should be heaps.
So I'm in this hole again, trying to run the cabling for Starlink. So we're gonna actually properly mount it. In order to get the cabling run, Simon was under the chart table pushing the cable with a magnet attached to it into the bilge as far as he could. I was in the aft locker with a magnetic wand trying to see through a hole my hand couldn't even fit into. After being upside down multiple times, eventually I grabbed it with the wand and we were able to wire it properly. What are you up to, Chrissy? Our air conditioning, and we want to be able to sleep in air conditioning tonight. It's currently nine o'clock, um, and so we're just trying to figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, it's not really pumping water out anymore. This looks good, no obvious defects or anything, um, so it should be working all right. So it must be something else. So now we're just putting it back together, and we're gonna try to open up the diaphragm and see if there's anything wrong in there. Should probably get a replacement one of these. Huh. Right, ready? Yeah. Great, stop, 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 stop! Success! What you doing? Pulling the air cons feed pump, the salt water pump, apart for the second time. Because it's not spinning. Um, when it was apart, it was spinning. So, I don't know why it's suddenly not spinning. No, the pump's not spinning. The magnet will spin without the pump. But once the pump's in, it won't spin. So there's got to be some sort of resistance there, which we're trying to work out what it is. It turns out that when we plug our boat into shore power, we are a 220 volt boat. Most of the power here is 110. However, they did give us a converter, but they did not convert the hertz. And unfortunately, after running our AC on the wrong hertz, it has ruined our motor, not our pump like we initially thought. And unfortunately, we ordered a new pump, not a new motor. So now we are going to have to run without air conditioning, which in the long run is fine because we can't use it out of the marina anyways.